I ignored my destiny once. I cannot do that again. Even for you. It's episode 12 of the Mad Titan Podcast with me, your resident supervillain, Mr. J. Washington. How y'all doing? How you feeling, people? I know it's been a minute, y'all. I've been going through some things. If you follow me, I've told everybody about it. I don't feel like I need to get into detail about it once again, but nonetheless, here I am, and uh, hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving. If you all have had that, have a happy Hanukkah. You celebrated that. And um, we're coming up on Christmas and New Year's, so a lot of holiday parties and things are shutting down and things are going to get crazy left and right. So we're going to we're gonna try to keep you as updated as I can. I'm probably going to do a best of TV shows for 2018, a best of films, movies for 2018. So expect those to come and a whole lot more. So I just want to get into it right now. Let me introduce my guest that I fuck around and had to bring back on for some reason. Um... Look, everybody else was unavailable. Like, there were 96 people I hit up, right? And 97 person was like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm game. And then all of a sudden they got sick. So then I went to number 98. And they was like, I'm about to get me some. And I was like, cool. And so then I hit this dude up at number 99. So y'all already know who he is. He's been on here before several times. He's irked my last nerves, and I love him like a brother. The Jersey Jackass, BC, Ben Campbell. What's up, bro? Yo, Big Dog. Hey, I just want to say that I'm really proud of you and of how brave you are, man. Why? Because, I mean, you built up, you know, the Mad Titan podcast, and then you brought me on and lost all your audience. And then, and then you built it back up again, and you brought me on again and lost all your audience. And now you've done it again. And you're just like, yo, I'm bored. I, I want to punish my audience again. Let's bring back the ETCW World Heavyweight Champion of the world. I would like to always remind people whenever he says that, the <laughs> ETCW is the East Texas Championship Wrestling title. As far as the world goes, the world is only on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, because I've never defended it anywhere outside of Wills Point, Texas. <laughs> that is fucking hysterical. How have you been, though, bro? What's been going on with you? Oh, man, I have been out of my mind, busy, crazy, running around, trying to prep everything uh, for the end of the year, getting ready for Christmas. Just got back from Kansas, drove out there to wrestle. That was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, you, you talked up front about doing, you got, you got the, your top 10 best movies coming out, your top 10 best shows coming out. Uh, don't forget at the end of the year, in about two weeks, I got you on uh, my podcast and we're going to do the, the bottom 10 movies of the year. Oh shit. I forgot. I agreed to that. Thanks for <laughs> yep. reminding me. <laughs> I'm so excited. I go, I go, I need someone to do the worst movies of the year with me. Who's as angry as I am? Ooh, Jay. <laughs> First of all, I need you not to say that out loud because that made people think, oh, he really is an angry black man. No, I am not an angry black man. Jesus. Let's just get right into it, man. Let's kick it off with Marvel News and pretty much the biggest news that we've had in the past week and a half. We finally got it after begging and scratching and clawing and pleading and listening to fans gripe left and right we finally have a trailer for avengers 4 and not only do we finally have the trailer we officially have the name which a lot of people knew what it was from the beginning so i don't know why the russos had to act brand new it is officially called avengers endgame what makes me really mad about that is they were also like no it has not been said yet and y'all have not guessed it Everybody it, like well, he's We've been saying every, Endgame since it came out. What you talking about? Right. Look, everybody knew when Doctor Strange said we're in the end game now what this meant. Yeah. Everybody knew what it meant. The trailer as of right now is the highest viewed trailer ever within twenty four hours. Mm-hmm. That that thing was insane, dude. And I love what they did with it. I thought it was perfect. I'm gonna tell you something. I said the same thing. Um, because 
There was no action in it. And it didn't need it. It didn't I'm, need it. It was just the emotional aftermath of what everyone had dealt with. I am I'm not watching another trailer for Avengers. I, that, I that's it. That one right there. Boom. It showed me what I want to know. It gave me the title. It even gave me a little joke there at the end, which I marked out for. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, you remember me? <laughs> we met in Germany. You, you know, Ant-Man. You remember Ant-Man, right? Ant-Man. That's that's that's. That, that one's me. <laughs> 215 million views since being released. That was in the Good first Lord. 24 hours. Good Lord. 215 million. The fact that Steve is so broken. he Steve Rogers is so broken. He shaved. Be- yo, yo, the internet is so hyped on him. Shit, they're like, they're like, yo, Thanos snapped his beard away. What? <laughs> I'm going to tell you what the saddest shit is. The saddest part of that whole trailer is the very beginning. Mm-hmm. When Tony is recording message for Pepper and when he drops the rescue line. No, that shit, that shit made me mad as hell. Why? Hold up now. So you telling me that they finished that shit and then Thanos just disappeared and Nebula just like, well, see you later, dude. <laughs> like, just hold left up. Where he is. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Did Nebula just like peace out? Like, Yo, my sister's dead. I'm I'm gone. See ya. <laughs> Nebula's like, yo, ain't shit else to do. Because think about it. If you're Nebula, your whole goal has been to kill Thanos, right? Mm-hmm. And to stop. You've been a part of what Gamora was to stop him from doing what he wanted to do. Which for the first time in any comic book movie we've ever seen, the villain won. Because mm-hmm. remember, that is a complete movie. Oh, yeah. You know, people are like, oh, it's a two-parter. Yes and no. That's a complete movie. The villain won. That's the end. That's the end. So at what point have you nebula, you like, well, you know what, let me just go and try to get myself together, get my life in order, go maybe find me some cyborg robotic dick. You know, and try to relax somewhere. <laughs> go 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 get me a job in the post office or something, you know, you know, know screw it. I'm serving, out. You know what I'm saying? I heard Space Target is hiring. You know, she ain't got too much she can do. And then you got Thor looking like he about ready to go a battle rap against Papa Doc. Like Yo, real talk. I was like, nobody thought about this, huh? Nobody thought about, yo, when they took this one shot, it was like, this is what we're going to put in the trailer. We're going to put Chris Hemsworth in a hoodie and a skull cap, sitting down looking like he got the greatest battle rap ever. He's got the greatest battle in battle rap history coming up. And like, yo, we just going <laughs> to drop it for the fans. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping it for the fans, yo, one two. But I mean, it like I said, it was no action. It was just all emotion. Mm-hmm. And, and that's that's exactly what I wanted from it. I don't want anything else. And and, and I'm not someone that I'm like, oh, the trailers are gonna ruin the movie. It's just like me. It's like the visionary. I don't want to see the visuals of what they're showing mm-hmm. uh, until I see it on that Dolby Cinema, you know, because I'm a big theater going experience kind of person. So. But that I thought that was perfect. We don't need anything else. You're going to get a billion and a half dollars. So they're going they're going to crack that too. They're definitely yeah. going to crack too. It's it's funny. I saw I saw kind of like a meme, just a bunch of pictures of showing all the different Disney movies, like Captain Marvel, a billion, Avengers, a billion, Star Wars, a billion, uh, Toy Story. We didn't even want it, but a billion. And then it goes Frozen, two billion. <laughs> It, it's like, it's, God Lord. like it's just crazy because it just shows you how when it comes to corporate juggernauts, it just shows you how powerful and how the magnitude of what Disney is mm-hmm. when they can keep doing that. And so that's amazing. Speaking of Disney, let's keep this moving. Disney has done something that happened and it became historical for several reasons. Black Panther has officially been nominated for Best Picture at the Golden Globes. That is so freaking dope, dude. And I am I, I am on the edge of my seat now waiting for the Oscars now because of this. Because I want that in that in, in that in that top ten no hands down hands down. Well, you know they always say that the Golden Globes are precursors to the Oscars. Mm-hmm. So to see that fine like superhero movies always get rec- recommended every year for Oscars. We already know that. But it's only for the technical categories visual effects, sound, lighting, stuff like that. For a, and I know this isn't the Oscars yet, but the Golden Globes, again, a precursor, for a superhero movie to be nominated for Best Picture. 
is is monumental. First and of it's, all, it, it's not ahead. like they put it in the uh, in that comedy and musical category. Like they put it in the actual best picture category. Like they did, like what they were trying to do, like they did with Get Out last year. Yes, how they screwed Get Out over. Uh-huh. And it is just surreal that they were able to do that. This has happened now. Whether it wins or not remains to be seen. I honestly hope it does, of course, but I have a funny feeling they won't. It won't win just so they can say, "Well, we nominated it." Uh, I I agree too, and I think I think the same thing. I think it's going to get into the Oscars because of how much pushback the audience has had and how much. And I think the Golden Globes putting it in there is a big step forward for them to go, "Yo, uh, we kind of have to put this in too." Well, it it was one of those films. It's been one of those films that have been talked about since it came out the beginning part of the year. Mm-hmm. If for a film to resonate that heavy throughout the entire year, and yes, I know that come August is when you start getting all the Oscar bait films, but even throughout all of that, people still talked about Black Panther. Exactly. It still hung in there. It still kept going in the fight. They're like, oh, what about this movie, this movie? Yeah, but remember, Black Panther 2. It always stuck in that conversation, it even if it was stuck. just a little bit. Yeah. And that's a that's a big move for it. And, that's a and, major move. That's a power play move. And, you know, a lot of people – there have been so many critics, and I'm not, not even going to say critics as far as what we do in TV and film, those critics who just want to be vocal and negative about the film. Oh, it was overrated. It wasn't good. No, because it's a black film and you don't think it should have had that. Let's just be honest. We know that's the reason some people say that. People may have their doubts against the movie because, oh, well, the third act was cheesy and the fight wasn't good. Yeah, they didn't have a major budget because this movie was a very big risk. Oh, I agree completely. You know, the movie was a risk. And so now when Black Panther 2 hits, they're getting the truck backed up. All the money needed to make this film complete from top to bottom is going to happen. So, again, it's just to see what awards it picks up this award season. I'm assuming it's going to pick up a couple of Best Picture awards, but it's going to be for those some of those awards that many people may not recognize or care for per se. Yeah, true. And the ones that they're just like, oh yeah, go ahead and give that to them. Um, but I don't, I don't know, and I don't know what else got into the nominations for the best drama. I have, I never really look at the uh, at the actual list for the Globes because it's, you know, it's it's really just drunk Hollywood partying. Um, it's, yes, the Hollywood foreign press. It's. But yeah. when you get, but when you get those those ones that stick out, those are the ones that you're like, okay, this is definitely going to be in that Oscar watch. Now we have we have a chance to jump in there. So. Yeah, let's go for it. Uh, Comic Con Experience Brazil happened this weekend, and a couple major things came Stupid out. Stupid fucking Brazil. Yo, why are you so angry? Yo, because you can't. Like, you can't be like, yo, trailer coming. Oh, yeah, only for Comic-Con members. Okay, first of all, let me get to that. But you <laughs> I'm sorry, I got, I got, it, it made me really bad. Remember how earlier in the show you said that I was going to be the angry black dude <laughs> and I didn't do shit to be angry? Yo, 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 I just said angry. I did not say black dude. Well, you know what the fuck it meant. It is, it is 2018. You can't oh, do that. Oh, God, let's not do this. Let's not do this. <laughs> anyway, so at Comic Con Brazil, they really so first off, uh, Fox gave us something from one of their final films under the Fox before they go to Disney. We got an X Men Dark Phoenix poster, which is very comic book accurate. It looks comic book accurate. Uh, I do really is, like that trail, that poster. Yeah, the problem is it proves once again what people have been saying for the from the beginning. X-Men Dark Phoenix is literally us revisiting X-Men The Last Stand. Mm-hmm. Without, and without Frazier. Without, Fra- yes. Without Kelsey Grammer and possibly without the cure. We get the cure. I hate it. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know what's really funny is they're doing the cure storyline on The Gifted right now, too. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I haven't, I haven't watched The Gifted in the past couple weeks, but it's like storylines that don't – yeah, I know. It's just, it's just, it's funny because Dark Phoenix is coming and they're doing the Cure story on the Gifted. I'm like, which is an X Men right. subsidiary. Yeah, yeah. So that happened there. I don't know if they got a new trailer, but also, uh, Spider Man Far From Home got the actual trailer, and, which so is crazy man. because it didn't release. 
and and may, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just like maybe I I, I let Twitter confirm it for me. Okay. But I could have sworn they said that official trailer coming on Saturday. Yeah, they did to to everybody. They never said oh Comic Con exclusive. No, they said we were actually getting the trailer on uh, at Comic Con that Saturday. They said the trailer was coming out. They didn't never they never stated at first. It was just a Brazil Comic Con uh, exclusive. No, so when it didn't drop, everybody was a little bit upset. But here's the dope thing that happened. People took notes about the trailer. Now I'm gonna tell you what the trailer is. Note for the note wise, okay? Now if you wanna know. Let me know now. If not, I'll skip over it, and I won't do that to you. To the fans, you're gonna get this shit one way or another. Oh, go no, go go ahead, go ahead. I again, like with me, it's I don't care if you tell me what's in it in the trailers. I just it, it's always visuals to me. Like okay. I don't want to see these so kind of things. Some of the but I'm gonna watch this trailer as soon as it comes out. Gotcha. Here's some of the bullet points that happen in the trailer. So the trailer kicks off with what sounds like a cute exchange between Peter and Aunt May, as we learn that she's supportive of his actions as Spider-Man now. So, okay, then it takes an unexpected turn because Happy Hogan shows up and it instantly becomes clear that she's now romantically involved. Happy's involved with the wall crawler's aunt. What? Happy is fucking Aunt May. Yo, <laughs> that's, yo, get you some, Happy, okay? Get you, great. I'm, get you some, Happy. I'm not it's mad at so... you. I mean, I mean, you ain't no Uncle Ben, dog. Like you need to, you need to watch out there. But I mean, get you some, dog. I really thought low key. I thought Tony was gonna sneak bang at me. Not gonna lie. Because you know what? Because I thought him and Pepper were on the outs. Like right, right. I thought him and Pepper were on the outs, and he was like, and all of a sudden, you. all of a sudden, fucking homecoming hits, and they're like, oh no, we're let's get married. You know, he like all of a sudden, you know, saying, do you want this Iron Man? Like <laughs> so. Also, it says that Peter is heading overseas to for a school trip in Europe, and it said that Peter cho- chooses to leave his Spider-Man costume behind because, <clears throat> excuse me, he just wishes to focus on having some fun. Then there's shots of a, a number of international locations, and there's a bit of romantic chemistry between Peter and Michelle, aka MJ. Oh. Nick Fury meets Spider-Man. They say Peter and Ned are chilling out in their hotel room. When Ned is knocked out unconscious after being hit in the neck with a dart, who was responsible? None other than the former S.H.I.E.L.D. director, Nick Fury. He said they'd be happy, very happy to finally meet Spider-Man, and despite the fact that the young hero is on vacation, turns out he has a job for him. Also, we're treated to some cool shots of Spidey's new suits before it's revealed that Fury wants Peter to help him battle the Elementals. These creatures have been popping up all over Europe, and we catch his glimpses of ones made out of sand, water and fire the sand is zephyr the water is hydron and fire is magnum okay yeah so these are now these are comic book characters right yeah here's where it gets interesting when you bring in mysterio they say peter isn't the only one trying to help though shield is also relying on quentin beck and we get to see him decked out in his comic accurate costume with green smoke wafts from his hands now does he have his fishbowl helmet the iconic one Yes, he does, because at the end of the trailer, he's shown decked out in that as he presents himself as the hero who's arrived to help save the day. Now, the stinger for the trailer is a scene of Flash Thompson making fun of Peter, but here's where things get really interesting. During their panel, Tom Holland revealed that Peter and Mysterio do indeed work together in the film, and they become like brothers. Now... If you put two and two together, Common Sense tells you that Mysterio is creating these elementals, but the dynamic of these two is clearly going to be much different than we expected, and it's also said there's no reference to the events of Infinity War or Avengers Endgame. Hmm. Could that mean this is potentially the events right before Infinity War? Right before Infinity War? Right. After Homecoming, we don't know the time difference between Homecoming and Infinity War. We don't know what the time was. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was confirmed that this was after Infinity it War. Was suppo- I, I, it was supposed to be at first, but I, now I'm pretty sure that it's going to be that in-between thing. Okay. Be- because if you do it after Infinity War, you automatically bring up him not dying and everything else. Which of course, because we knew of the we knew of the sequel, 
Yeah. But if it's before <laughs> Infinity War, it, even though you know Tom Holland is already scheduled for a third film, it beckons the question, what happens in Endgame? True. And it um, adds more suspense if I'm, you know, saying if I'm, I'm looking at it that way. And yeah, you're right. Semester. And I just, I, I, I didn't, I did not even consider that because, and you know, I, I'm one of, I get on to people. They're like, well, we know everybody's coming back. Yeah, I know. Just shut up and live in the moment. I hate uh, that, that, that annoys the dog shit out of me. And I'm, to the listeners, by the way, if you haven't noticed, this is kind of one of those, what is it? N S F W. Look, not safe for work. <laughs> I'm going to say some shit, okay? You're going to hear some shit. So here's what you finna hear. Um, What the fuck is that going on in my street? That's what I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this shit happens real and raw, and I'm not editing this out. Um, <laughs> I hate it. I hate people did the same shit. Oh, we know, we know that uh, everybody's going to come back. So what's the purpose of the movie? It's for you to fucking enjoy it. Shut the fuck up. I hate Man, I was, I was worried. I thought that was only like me having to deal with the people like here in Texas. Like, <laughs> no, Because I hear that everywhere. so much. It's and I was like, look, just live ridiculous. in the moment and appreciate what they did. Yes, we know they're coming back. Those of us who are in this in this world, we know we've signed contracts and other movies are coming out. But we don't know how they're going to do that and what the story is going to be. And you plugging that in, they're like, oh, oh, Far From Home might be take place before Avengers. That's completely blew my mind. Did not even consider that was an option. I just figured, oh, at some point, of course, Spider-Man's coming back. He's Spider-Man, whatever. I'll I'll deal with that when that happens. Mm -hmm. But now that you say that, I'm like, oh, wow, he might this might actually take place before uh, Infinity War. I think War. that's what it will. I think it will. I mean, I think it's interesting if it does. Mm -hmm. I think it's more interesting if it does. If it takes place between Homecoming and Infinity War, because we don't, like I said, we don't, we just see Peter on a school bus. And it would be, yeah. for me, it would be dope if Spider-Man Far From Home ends with him getting on the bus that he ends up having to get off of in, in Infinity War. Yeah, not to mention like he immediately has his like spider sense in Avengers, which he we we've never seen we didn't see him use in uh, Civil War or Homecoming. Right. So this could be something that we learn in here, and that God that makes so much more sense. Holy crap! I didn't... thank you, and you learn and you learn how much sense it makes here on the Mad Titan podcast. All exactly. Right? Learn learning with Jay. Learning with Jay. Let's go into. I haven't seen the gifted, so if you got anything about the gifted, I would I'll acquiesce that to you. Uh, okay. Well, if you want to know things about the gifted, I actually do a gifted after show on Cinelinks's YouTube channel. Uh, you can go watch that. Me and uh, Quad Quad X Matt. Uh, we 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 break down every episode right after. So if you want to get caught up on the gifted, come watch me over on the Cinelinks YouTube channel. Motherfucker, you supposed to talk about what's happened now, not try to send people to a whole another thing. Give people a brief synopsis. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, <laughs> I, look, I, 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 sorry, you hadn't been watching, so I didn't want to just throw it out there. I didn't know if I was gonna spoil nothing. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a shit. I absolutely love The Gifted. The Gifted is probably one of my favorite superhero shows on TV right now because I've been such a big fan of the X Men. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now we have, uh, you know, the mutant underground trying to go up against the mutant uprising and uh, the uprising has now released all mutants that, that have been caught by the government. They've released them and set them free on the world and basically started out an all out war. And Ooh. it looks insane. That was our fall finale. And it it ended literally ended with all like the mutant like they give them these callers that cut their powers. Right. And the uprising went in and cut all the uh, callers like the power to them. And mm -hmm. so when we come back, it's going to be like all mutants have gone out and are trying to take out all of humanity. So. I am super hyped for what's hey man, gonna happen. If that can happen in real life right about now, I'm all for it. Cause yes, me too. Look, just just do it, please, just do it. Let's go over to DC news real quick. Plastic Man is getting a movie. Okay, now here's where the, the I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go to you for comic 
uh, he's, real okay. lateness. He's, he's okay, not, he's this not this elongated man. He's a no, different he character. No, he's not elongated man. These are two different characters. He is actually, so right now it is in development, and Amanda Adoko will be pinning the script for the film. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. It, it's crazy. That's really interesting to me. Now, of uh, course, uh, Elongated Man is is Ralph Dibney. Patrick mm-hmm. Man, I mean Patrick Man, Lord Jesus, Plastic Man is Patrick O'Brien. Okay. So these are two different people, but they're both DC Comics characters. That's that's interesting. I mean... <sighs> it's confusing as fuck is what it is. Yeah, everything DC does is kind of confusing. <laughs> Well, you know what? I would I would normally agree with, in normal in normal circumstances. I agree with you completely on that. But from the reviews I've heard about Aquaman, which people have loved it, yeah, you know, they, they, I mean, I know, I I get it. I love. I, I I'm excited for Aquaman. I cannot wait. I'm excited for Man of Steel too. Oh, wait, never mind. Uh, I'm excited for the Batman. Oh, uh, wait, that's uh, is that coming? You we don't shit. we don't know. Uh, I'm excited you for. You are a horrible person for this one. I'm excited for Birds of Prey. Or the fabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn? No, you have to say it right. It's called Birds of Prey or the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. See, that's see, that's my that's where I'm going. I'm like, what are y'all? I don't get what you're trying to do. Uh, you've got a random Joker movie coming out. Now you have a random Plastic Man coming out. All the while, you have the Rock on retainer, and you still haven't done anything with him. Uh, well, you ready? Oh, if you think that's it, you ready for the next one? The Blue Beetle is being developed into a movie as well. I see, and I want to get mad, be like, "Wait a minute, what? Where's Man of Steel 2? But here's at the same time, I'm mad. like, here's "Yo, Blue Beetle sounds at, dope." Uh, here's this is where I'm going to cut you off. Here is here's why I'm not going to be mad about Blue Beetle for several reasons. First and foremost, it is about time we've had a Latinx superhero at the forefront. Yes. yes. Okay. We've had it at the forefront, and it it is is due. So they're doing, and they're doing the Jaime Reyes story. Mm-hmm. Also, we may finally get the sequel to Upgrade that we thought we were gonna get in Venom, because <laughs> that's Good all it is. Third, I have the perfect idea for the perfect voice who could play the Scarab. So the Scarab has uh, again. I'm not I. I watch. I, I'm a big movie and and TV show guy. I've never read the com. The com. Does he have his own voice? Yeah, the Scarab is his own entity as well. Okay. But see, the difference is, yeah, the Scarab is his own entity. The only entity. The difference is in Venom, the suit, the suit never really talked to Eddie like that. That we know of. This yeah, it was just it was it. just in his head. Right. This is the first time they made it a character. Also, just to let you know that, that it comes out in just like a little over a week I know, uh, on Blu-ray. Like, I've seen people say this is the fastest Blu-ray turnaround in history. Well, I mean, you know, if you want to come have a watch party, I'll fly you down here to Dallas. We can, we can watch it, Doc, because I know you love it as much as I do. Don't you cherish our friendship? <laughs> you cherish our friendship, right? I do, man. Well, I do. That's why I want end. you to love this movie like <laughs> We don't know because it would end. It would it would end completely. Uh, so yeah, here's the thing. But back to the Blue Beetle, the Scarab is its own entity, and this is not just a voice in his head. The Scarab is alive. Yeah. I know the perfect person to play the voice of the Scarab. Who you got? John Leguizamo. Oh my God, I would love that. Have John Leguizamo voice the Scarab, while you have you. It's there's a plethora of great young. Uh, Latin actors out there, you can be, yeah. you can get to be Jaime Reyes. What? But you need somebody with the quirkiness and and the funniness, and that can be serious as well. That the Scarab has to bring, and and John Leguizamo does it because I'm always gonna go back to him as the Violator in Spawn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what? What was the the animated the DC animated film with with Blue Beetle in it? Was it? Judas contract was it? Uh, He's in the Young Justice. Yeah, no, the the mo- the the movie one, not the not the uh, TV show. There was a movie. Uh, that happened was it in Judas? There. It might have been. I can't remember, but I, I just, remember I just watching. Saw it. I think it's Judas contract. I think. And I loved. I and that was the first I had like seen like live because I haven't seen Young Justice and seeing him in that. I'm like, I love this character. Mm-hmm. He's one of my go tos on Injustice. And uh, as much as I want to be like, okay, DC, let's get a collective idea here. 
I'm like, yo, Blue Beetle sounds like a great idea. And I really think this one this one could be a lot of fun too. I just wish I'm be honest, before they do any other in development films, mm-hmm. I really wish that they would have gone ahead and worked with Cyborg. Yeah, me too. I really just wish they'd have worked with Cyborg. You had him there, you had the potential, you could have just made it happen, but I mean things don't always turn out the way we want to with these with these films and these projects and these production companies, but god damn it, you set up a character that Granted, he got cheated out of his roles in Justice League, and now we go forward, but uh, you know what? It's frustrating. It's too damn frustrating. Uh, As you know right now, we're going into the epic three-night crossover known as Elseworlds for DC TV, which encompasses Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and Arrow. I mean, no Legends on this one. I'm sorry, The Flash and Arrow. Um, So last week, this as I'm recording this now, I'm recording this episode on a Sunday evening. Um, normally I would have already recorded. I got to figure out a new day to get this out to you guys because I try to get it out on Tuesdays, but it's, it makes no sense when both Flash and Black Lightning air on Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. Um, I might change up something anyway for the next week or so, but nonetheless, at the end of each show last week, at the end of both of Supergirl, Flash, and Arrow, it was the same post credit scene. It was Earth 90 being decimated and Jay and Wally Barry Allen, uh, John Wesley Ship's '90s Flash in that '90s Monica, costume, in his co- in the costume, which is not not a remade costume. The costume comes and approaches the the monitor, Monica Garrett. The monitor looked dope as shit. I I, I again, that's a character who I don't know who the character is, and I'm excited to see more about it. Mm-hmm. Also, if you remember in, in, at that post credit scene, I'm sorry, guys, if I'm stumbling, uh, brain scrambled, trying to do a lot of this. So many Easter eggs. So many Easter eggs, and there's a list of every single one. Um, so it is Captain Cole from the 90s, Captain Cole, Stargirl, The Huntress, uh, Hawkman, Hawk Girl, uh, Come on, Smallville, Green it. Arrow. Yeah, Justin Hartley. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he, it probably wasn't actually Justin Harlan, and, it, and he's probably not going to be in it, but it was cool to see. Yeah, but so those are different. So that lets you know, because here, so I've already heard what the end of this crossover leads to. And I could tell you, or I could save it for all y'all. You should probably save that. Okay, I'll text it to you. Okay. I'm going to text it to you while I talk about it. But yeah, so it starts, and so let's. I did. I, I've given up on Supergirl. Y'all already know I have given up on Supergirl. Really? I didn't. I didn't realize that. I'm actually really enjoying the season. Yeah, that's not because you only want to see Sam Witwer. And uh, oh, that's probably true. I just, I just couldn't take the beating over the head. Yeah, it is. It is very, very. Look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I get you. Okay, I get that. So let's get uh, right. Gifted, so I... Gifted's actually doing that too with the uh, pu- oh, the yeah, pure. Got, yeah, that's one of the reasons I think I might have pulled back on it. Yo, the purifiers, like we have a joke. It's it, they are so KKK. Like it is like, but it's funny because there's like they always have like a like a black guy and then a Hispanic dude in the back, but then everyone that speaks is just like so KKK. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, let's go into um. I'll get into Arrow in a second. Let's go into Legends. Legends' most recent episode, they ended up in New Orleans. And mm-hmm. uh, an old love affair from Constantine comes back to haunt him. Now, listen, we knew that Constantine, I guess he was, you can consider him asexual? Uh, I kind of considered him pansexual, kind of like Deadpool. Like, he just That's goes what I sleep mean, with pan, I, Okay, I'm sorry. I meant pansexual. Like, he'll, yo, if he's attracted to you, he gonna bone you. Yeah. And so he had an old love affair, and basically his love affair is, is crossed over with the, the haunting of the demon that's chasing him. And Marie Laveau shows up, and she she wants him to help her family and all this and that. Um, Charlie's getting her ability back to change shapes. I don't like that. You know what the stupidest thing that happened on Legends to me was? What? Mona in love with the creature. Yeah, that, that whole storyline was stupid. They, that shouldn't even have been there. I was like, yo, y'all was setting up a nice little thing with her and Gary. Then all of a sudden, y'all like, nah, we're going to have her in love with a beast who going to maul her at the end. 
Yeah, that it, it made no sense. I didn't. I, I I don't know. I don't know what they were trying to go for, but it just didn't work. The best thing they did do was have the killer doll. Yo. Yeah. The spirit of that doll was better than anything I saw in that whole show. Because when Ray goes in the room at first, like, it's a killer doll, and he's shaking the wrong doll, and the right the doll is actually possessing him in the head with the uh, shovel and says, wrong doll, you dick. I was like, <laughs> And then it ends up being the puppet of uh, Professor Stein. Of Professor Stein? Yo. <laughs> this show is so funny. Like everything, Rory, everything about this show is so good. Their chemistry is so on point. Jess McCallan, who plays Ava Sharp, is great. Because her, her and Mick were at each other's throats. And yo, when he was like, I don't like the C word. I was like, you, he was like, clone. I was like, yo, he gonna really call her a cunt? He gonna really? <laughs> yeah, uh, man. I, I, I'll tell you what. I had, I had, I have two negatives though about this though. What? I don't like uh, uh, Maisie Richardson, Charlie's character, getting her transforming back because I want her to stay as Maisie because I love her. She is, and I love this incarnation that she's doing. It looks like she's having a lot of fun on the show. So. I don't want her to them to keep switching her out with new characters, you know. Because yeah, she gets to be herself. Yeah, and I love I love this this version of they're letting her be. Mm. Uh, Ava Sharp. I don't like her dating Sarah. Why not? Because some of the best moments were Sarah going out there and seducing random people in time. Oh yeah, when she boned Guinevere, dude. <laughs> How about Guinevere was the best to me? I love it. So I don't – I'm like, oh, domesticated Sarah's not so fun. <laughs> okay, I get, I get where you're coming from with that one. I I, get, I can feel like – I'm used to Sarah being wild and free. Exactly. But, but I think they wanted – the writers this season wanted to settle her down more. But it's like, yo, that's the cute – like, for, for instance, for me, like, okay – Ray don't know what he want to do because everybody he falls in love with either leaves him or, or falls for somebody villain. else. <laughs> or some kind of super villain. <laughs> or Because or, he's – yeah, he loves Nora Dark right now, so cool. Zari's just there. Yeah. Now, if you tell me her and Mick going to start boning, I'm going to holler laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come up, write a novel with me? <laughs> I fucking start laughing, so we'll see no. with that. Uh, let's go on. Oh yeah, before I go, it ended because this was the mid-season finale, and Legends won't come back until April. Oh, is Legends not on this week? No, this is Legends was done. This is their mid-season finale. Oh, I thought they had their I thought they had their own like crossover planned for this week, where it's like them and a whole bunch of different versions of themselves. Is it? That's what I because I remember them talking about that they were like like since we're not part of the crossover we're doing our own crossover that has us with like other versions of ourselves. You sure it's this week or not in April? When they come see, back? that's the thing. I don't know that. I just assumed it was this week. Okay, well we'll so, figure that out. Yeah, uh, let's go on to Arrow real quick. Arrow Oliver is back as he's out. He's free, and first of all, him and Felicity are gonna get divorced. Jeez, this is okay. That I, really all that, all this stuff to get y'all back together, mm -hmm. just to have you separate again. Yep. Come on now, we've seen this. I don't need this storyline. This is drama for drama's sake. First of all, I do like the fact that she shot the shit out of dude, and Oliver was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I did like, yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> he was like, "You just can't shoot nobody." She's like, "Really? Because you put arrows in everybody." <laughs> <laughs> and then Oliver had to look, you know, Oliver should have been like, all right, touche, touche. Um, one of the things I did like was he suits up again. He finally suits back up, but no mask. Ooh, yeah. Okay. All right. I, 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 I don't, I didn't tell you this. I got so angry at this show this week and I love Arrow, but okay. when they showed us who the other, who the, uh, the, the vigilante is. Yeah. And they spoiled the name and the title of the episode. Oh, see, I didn't see the title, so I'll the give you that. The name of the title of the episode is My Name is Amico Queen. Okay. I didn't see, did not know that. But here's my problem. That was not a chick all episode, all season long. You cannot go 
from a Ray Park looking dude to an Ariana Grande looking girl and tell me like, oh, yeah, it's been the same person the whole. No, it hasn't. You have been this this that was a different actor this whole time. You, yes, you could was, have at least got someone who is the same body shape or was a chick girl the whole time. Yeah, that Don't was a dude the whole time. Like, that was a dude until the final ep- until this recent episode. That sh- that made me so mad. I was oh boy, don't you can't come on now. Yeah, All right, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. But you know what I mean. Get it off your heart. Like you know what I mean though. Like that's that's BS. Like at least try to have some kind of continuity all the way through. I, I'm assuming so. Because even cool the gear of, looks different. It even looks like a girl now. I'm like, so come I'm kinda, on. Now. I'm 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 cool with a couple of the um producers for for Arrow. Yeah. And I understand what they were trying to do. I guess they were figuring that no one would really pay that much attention to it. Yeah, I, and, and again, no one probably would except me. I'm just stupid, and I and I get angry at things. Also, I just don't like Oliver going around as the Green Arrow with no mask. Yeah, but uh, uh, Arrow no. has made me Arrow has made me more of a Green Arrow fan. And if I'm not mistaken, um, he did that in the comics. It came to a point that everyone just knew he was the Green Arrow, right? Yeah, but it's like, put the hood on at least. Yeah. Don't be walking around here with a fresh fade. <laughs> <laughs> with a fresh fade, man. Everybody can see his shit. Yo, hold up. Arrow got a new cut, man. Looking good, dog. Yo, man, he got he cut his beard off. He all lined and trimmed up. I love how they're like, he's going to get his beard this time. Well, we did get it. In prison. <laughs> we got it for seven episodes. Seven, eight episodes. And, and they only like, in prison. Shave this shit off. What'd you say? And only while he was in prison. <laughs> only while in prison. Not in the Arrow costume. And and here's the thing. They never – and we never got the goatee. True. We just got a beard. So I'm like, all right. Um, yeah, it's interesting now to see that because the fla- – and also the flash forwards are supposedly supposed to be paying off. I'm are really supposedly confused. supposedly supposed to be paying off. Yes, yeah, yeah. right. I, I knew what you were saying. I got you. Okay, I just want to make sure I said it right. Uh, so yeah, I just want to see what happens with those, but this is something I really want to talk to. I really want to talk about, and I wanted to get into this, the flash, the hundredth episode of the flash was everything it needed to be. Absolutely. I was, this season has made me very skeptical of the show. Really? Everything has not been firing the way it should have been. This is your fifth season. You should be firing on all cylinders. Yeah. You should have the formula down. It should work. Everything should rock and roll. It's been a lot of misses. This episode hit on so many different levels that it was so dope. It was amazing to see Teddy Sears back as Zoom. Mm-hmm. It was amazing to hear Tony Todd back as the voice of Zoom. Yeah. The way they did the whole travel through time and Nora had to see her dad damn near dead all these different situations. <laughs> My thing is, is she gonna look at Iris different now? Yeah, true. Um I see me, I actually really enjoyed everything about this. Oh, I enjoyed uh, it. And, and and the se- and I mean the season altogether. I have oh, okay. really enjoyed the season. I think this has been a huge step up from the last couple seasons because I don't think the Flash has ever been as good as it was as season one. Uh, while I really I loved Zoom, I thought Zoom was incredible. I think the Zoom, season the Zoom around season Zoom was good until they wasted Teddy Sears. Yeah. And then the the season wow. and everything around Zoom, I didn't really like. I liked Zoom. I just didn't like everything around him. Right. Uh, and then, um, so I think this has really got me back on and on board. And when Ralph hit that back in time and started playing that music, bruh, if I didn't crack up laughing, like okay, that was a I'll legitimate admit, I started laugh hollering. Hollering moment. I started hollering <laughs> because it was perfect. Absolutely. But here's my question now. What is up with Nora? Uh, I don't know. That caught, that threw me off too. But I like how it did. Yeah. Also, this is what I loved about the 100th episode. It gave you Easter eggs that you never fucking paid attention to. Mm-hmm. The doctor that helps uh, Oren with uh, Grace yep. is the same doctor at the night of the first explosion. All these little things have happened, and we've never... 
that now that is a testament to the writers' room when they started calling back a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, that I, I and again, that's something that I've always loved about this uh, the Arrowverse altogether. They do a good job at just little things like that and making them mean something that you don't realize it means until they're ready to show you, like, hey, remember this? Boom, it was same person. But I don't think we'd ever thought like again the doctor situation is the one that got me the most. Yeah. Because we started finding out a while ago that people were at the Enlightenment. I mean, not the Enlightenment. Uh, that the vote was at the the night the particle acceleration accelerator exploded. Mm-hmm. We found out those things, but that little bitty thing like that, and it's just so many simple little things. Dude, when you found out that Cicada could pull his fucking dagger out of space, yo. <laughs> but you know why that is? No, I don't. Because he has a piece of the shrapnel in his chest. Ah, uh, okay. I do, and I am loving uh, Klein in this role. You know what? I gave Chris Klein a little bit of shit at first. Yeah. And now in this episode, I was like, okay, bet, because his face when he saw Killer Frost, he's like, oh, what the, what the fuck is, where, where's she come from? <laughs> I, 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 cause you know, I love, I, I, I own all those American pie movies. They're just, they're just fun from my childhood. Yeah. And I even own the damn street fighter that he's in. Really? And I, I'm pretty sure I have it just cause it's funny as hell to watch him in that role. <laughs> That's hysterical. Um, but yeah, I like the way this ended again, the, the cliffhanger they left you on with, uh, Nora and the go see, I don't know. Is that Thawne? Is that, you know, that version of Wells that she saw that's locked up, that's in a sense locked up? Is he Thawne? Is he Wells? Who is he? I'm pretty sure that's Thawne. That's that. That's how. That's what I took it as. But uh, I now think that's that you the bring older up the Eobar, question, Eobar Thawne. Yeah. Now that's the actual reverse Flash. Yeah. Uh, now um, that you raise that for... question, makes me think. Oh, what'd you say? Is, now that you raise that question, is that him? I start going. Oh, maybe it might not be. Let's I think it might be Eobar Thawne. It's got to be somebody. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Black Lightning, man, real quick. So, Khalil goes to rob some, rob some members of the 100 for some money. Yo. He Dude. was like, he was like, man, I ain't trying to fight y'all, but since you want it... <laughs> you can get it. <laughs> and man, Jennifer's I'm... abilities, in fact, she has control of her powers now. Mm-hmm. Man... I'm. I, the, they are really hitting it off on all these shows, and you know, you told me because you had seen so much of Black Lightning before it started, how much this was gonna. Re, I was really gonna love this, and this season has been incredible. I I fell off a little bit on season one. I thought it started out really strong and kind of faded out toward the end, but this season is so damn good, and I'm enjoying every single moment of it. Dude, the fact that Tobias Well brought in Cutter, who mm-hmm. in in the comics is a guy. Oh, really? Yes, that was so good, I like that. Bent. That's good. Switch. Yeah, so they gender bent it for this character, which I'm fine with. But she was bad as shit, bro. That mm-hmm. fight with her and Khalil. That's yeah, I loved. I that was that was dope as hell. That's one thing I have loved about this season too. As much as you said they've stepped it up, I've also loved the choreography, the stunt choreography, and the fight choreography. It's been amazing this season. It, yeah, it it really has. Like every single fight is completely on par. Arrow Arrow's done that a lot too. Their fights have been really good, which I which I love. Like because you don't want to get stale and stagnant and start seeing the same. Man, I can't believe I just said that. I had to stop myself. You don't want to get stale and stagnant and start seeing the same type of fights over and over. <laughs> yeah. I realized how many S's I was about to say in a row, and I was like, God damn. Hey, hey you know what? You you actually had it going pretty smoothly. Like, not like you stumbled at all. I know. I just said I realized when I was saying it. I was like, well, damn. But um, that is something I love. Also, in this episode of Black Lightning, Tobias is starting to put two and two together who Black Lightning is, which I'm glad. Yeah, I was as soon as I'm like, ah, thank you, finally. I mean, but it's kind of obvious. Black Light didn't only save these girls. He don't give a shit about nobody else's kids. Yeah, uh, you know that that always cracks me up when 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 villains do that. Like like one of my favorite things. I know a lot of people don't like uh, the Amazing Spider-Man two, but as soon as uh, Harry sees uh, what's her Gwen name Stacey. there, at Gwen Stacy, and he goes, he's Peter. I was like. 
thank you. Someone <laughs> smart. That's so great. Because <laughs> he does have this look like, bitch, why? Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because it, it, it's when it happens, it has to be one of those. Oh, really? It can't just come up like, well, of course. Yeah. So I, I get what you're saying with that one. Um, let's so to, like I said, Tobias is figured out. Let's go on the Titans because you and I were talking about this before we started recording. Uh, you know what? This show is such a surprise to me. It found its legs. And I, I've since episode one, I have been on board. And before that, you know, we talked about it a lot about how hot garbage this was going to be. Mm-hmm. And good lord, if I haven't no- loved every single episode and moment. And um, you know what? I'm going to admit with you as well. I remember talking to so many different people who was like, "Yo, Titans going to be trash. Titans is trash. Titans is in humans level bad." Yeah. And I've watched it, and I've been like, you know, they've had some slip-ups, but like I said, they had to find their footing. And once they did, it's been rolling. Yeah. Like, I don't get what everybody was so upset about. Okay, Starfire didn't go the way we thought it was going to go originally, but now it's starting to open up, and you realize that, oh, shit, the bad guy ain't Rachel. The bad guy may be Starfire. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is really interesting, and and also given like the preview for next week's episode, I'm like I'm like man, because it, it looks like she doesn't want to be the bad guy, and she sees that some she doesn't know exactly what's going on, and and I, I like that aspect of this because it's keeping me guessing, it's kind of keeping me like I don't see where they're going with this, and I love when shows can do that when you can make me when I cannot pick out where you're gonna go. Well, is and that's another thing because now when I see that. I'm I'm inclined to think of the previous episode where the dude who was the doctor that had them in the asylum mm-hmm. and he was like you can heal them like you healed me and she was like I take it back and had mm. dude bleed out yeah the only reason Corey remembers is because Rachel healed her oh I didn't even think about that good point you know I pay attention to a little shit like that. But Good nonetheless, point. this episode was super dark. We got the origins of Hawk and Dove. Which I didn't see coming. I didn't see us jumping away from that main storyline and going into this. I didn't even know Hawk and Dove were coming back. I didn't either. And I'm glad, but this this lets you know that, hey, they're not gone. I'm just kind of, it's kind of wild that we started out this episode on the child molestation note. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Wow. To see... Uh, Hank, who is, who's Hawk, and it was his younger brother, Donnie, to basically see Hank take the the fucking for his brother. Mm-hmm. I was like, what the fuck? This this was crazy, and, and I didn't know if they were ever going to go back to it and, uh, uh, you know, have the brothers, like, kind of talk about what had happened. And as the show kept going, as the episode kept going on, to see us go to the and to see that moment where uh, first, you know, the fight in the school where they and, – and and then they have his brother step up and be like, you know, just kick us out of here. Like, F all this crap. Man, when he, he went hard. He was like, you know what, do what you're going to do. What? She was like, what? Kick us the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then to have them have this moment together and and become these – start to become these heroes, and then, bro, like I had to rewind this that, that little car crash because I was like, well, hold on a second. Wait a minute. What just happened? Because <laughs> <laughs> you get this like bird's eye view, and I'm like, what the – and I was I was I was folding laundry, Jay. I was folding laundry trying to watch. All of a sudden, we going in grieving. I'm like, wait a minute, hold on a second. Let's go back 30 seconds. What the, what the hell just happened here? <laughs> Dude, I didn't expect that the both of them, her, her mama and his brother, both got smacked. Oh uh, man, that I was. Oh. I was like, fuck. <laughs> Dude, but you you know what? It's kind of interesting because it caught on to me because I was like, okay, first when you saw how they made the makeshift costumes, mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie to you. 
when they first made the costumes, him and his brother, I was like, you motherfuckers deserve to get caught. <laughs> I thought it was going to have something to do with Robin, honestly. I thought that was going to come back. Well, because y'all sitting there recording it with a full camera. <laughs> y'all deserve But then you realize, oh, his brother's name is Don, and now he meets Dawn. Yeah. I just want to know who do they go to to upgrade their suits. Yeah, that's interesting. Because who took the Dove suit and said, yo... I'm going to make you have feathers made out of blades. Because, yeah. hey, I'm with, but like I said, it was a dope story. I just, here's, and the crazy thing about Rachel ca- calling out to them in their dreams. That was throwing me off. And the fact that uh, Dawn realized it and was like, what the fuck? Yeah. I, I, I Again, I love Minka Kella. Min- Minka Kelly. Like I think she is, and, and when I fir- when she was the first episode, I was kind of like, I don't know, these characters are really dull, and just getting into a little more of their backstory here really sucked me back into them and made me really go, you know what, maybe I, I don't, I I really do like this, like these characters, and I want to see more of them, and that's what I've liked about the series is I have gone in going, this is not going to be good, this is not, and they have proven me wrong every single time. Yeah, I didn't and think we were gonna get anything. I didn't think we were gonna get anything memorable out of Hawk yeah. and Dove. And then to end on that note of just we got to go get Jason Todd, who has that has been my favorite episode. That episode with Todd has been my favorite episode all he season. He deserves what is coming to him in the future. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I'm gonna ask you a question about that in a second too. But just for and then the Hawk field, who's that? She, I don't know, but we got to go find. Him. <laughs> I, hey, who the fuck is that? I, huh? I was like. I'm so glad I want more Jason Todd. And uh, again, I'm not a comic reader. Is that how he is in the comics? Because all I know from him is Under the Red Hood, which I've seen the the movie of. Is Mm -hmm. that how the Jason Todd character is? Kind of a hothead? Yeah. Yeah. Because I kind of felt more like like, I thought that was more of uh, Damian Wayne's type of character. And I thought Jason Todd was more of a a good uh, follow through Robin. I didn't realize he was so much of a dick. <laughs> of an actual dick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know what this episode shows you above all? Yeah, what? This is what, for those who watched this recent episode of of Titans that was titled uh, The Hawk and the Dove. Uh, no, this one was called Hank and Dawn. I'm sorry, Hank and Dawn. Yeah. What this episode teaches you, ladies and gentlemen, is that true love is beating a child molester to death together and then fucking immediately after. Yep. That is Sounds true about love. right. <laughs> that is now, true love. I now know what I've been doing wrong all these years. We have not been beating child Like, I gotta find me. I'm gonna find me a woman in my life. Like, look, if you love me, you'll help me stomp this motherfucker's earlobes together with me. Oh man, and I'll and I'll tell you what. Another thing that I'm uh, I love about this is you could tell that this season is or this show is I don't know show maybe just season is the origin of Nightwing. Yeah, we're gonna get Nightwing. Yeah, because once he burned the Robin suit, that lets you know automatically we're getting Nightwing. I'm like, oh, this is so damn cool. I want I I want Batman in this. I want a Batman show so damn bad. They keep showing the Batmobile and all that shit, and I'm just like. Give me Batman. <laughs> so I've had so I've had this discussion with different people. Yeah. So the discussion is that some people are fine with Batman being a character but not being on the show. Mm-hmm. Some are like, yo, if you're going to keep talking about him, just show him. I think they have said his name so damn much. It is going to get to the point that you're like, all right, you kind of need to show him now. Because, like, there was one episode that they called – they said Bruce – probably every other sentence yes they did and i'm just like all right y'all are starting to get a little much with that and then they show the batmobile and i'm just like okay come on now like you're at some point it, just like supergirl at some point you can't be like superman's here but you're never gonna see him at some point they had to show a superman yeah. And they, they, they mentioned Lex so damn much. At some point, they have to show us Lex, and Lex, we now know Lex is coming. You show, you keep mentioning Batman so damn much, at some point, 
the audience will either turn on you or you're going to have to show him to us, which is going to be a very interesting day. Dude, I, I well, they, there was supposedly some um, – there was some steals of what supposedly is a Batman suit for Titans. Mm -hmm. And if that be the case, I don't want to see it. Oh, I didn't see it. It's terrible. And I'd I'd be fine with like you don't go get you don't have to get a name, get a stunt man, and just have him you know kick an ass somewhere, and we don't have to see him too much. But you you do see and you're like yeah that's Batman, you know, kind of kind of like when Jason Todd saved uh, Dick, and it's the smoke and the ass kicking going on, and you're like uh, that's another Robin like. Something like that, I I think would be okay, but you also have to cut back on all the bat references. Because my my problem too becomes, if we're gonna make them the Titans, we're gonna make them a team. They're gonna have to get a building. Now God knows they're not gonna get a building shaped like a T. <laughs> what? Come on, man! It would fit this world so well. <laughs> it's just a random T building, ain't nobody using. <laughs> <laughs> You know, this building was for Telemundo, but they didn't want it no more. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and let y'all get it, and, and hopefully y'all can use it. I don't, I, it. It is what it is. It is what it is. Um, I think that's about all I've got, man. First of all, I want to say thank you, BC, again for helping lower my listenership. And <laughs> I'm here for it. It's what I'm here for. And doing it late night, man. This is a late night uh recording this and knocking this one out but i appreciate you, tell, you, being you telling me i'm two hours ahead of you you're two <laughs> yeah it's 2 a.m here oh oh shit um <laughs> fuck. uh nigga thank you <laughs> it's all good it's all good what, what am oh, i gonna man, do look tell the people where they can find you and where they can reach you hey uh, y'all know you can hit me up on all social media at real jack spc r-e-l-j-a-c-k-a-s-s-b-c twitter snapchat instagram facebook whatever it is you can get me there uh, my podcast it is what it is with the jackass every single thursday last week we did our most anticipated films for 2019 uh this week i'm just gonna babble about random stuff and in about two weeks i think on the 27th is when i'm scheduled to have or the 24th or no, 27th, I'm scheduled to have you, Jay, on there, and we're going to talk the worst films of 2018, and I am so excited for that. That's one of my favorites. Man, ne I'm looking next forward week, to that. Next week, and Jay, I need you to do this too. I'm doing my Festivus episode, and I'm going to be airing my grievances. I want everybody to get on Twitter, use the hashtag JackassFestivus, and let me know who pissed you off this year. I'm giving away a copy of uh, Seinfeld Season 9 uh, to anyone who do, who does the, the whoever has the best one, I'm gonna read out. I, we're just gonna talk about everyone that has pissed us off all year long. I might not work if, again in this city if I start saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite episodes all year because I just I just love the airing of the grievances, man. <laughs> all right, well check it out for me. Y'all already know how you can find me: Twitter and Instagram at Mr. J Washington. That's M R J A Y. You should know how to spell Washington. It is on a dollar bill. YouTube.com slash J-A-Y Washington 80. I've come back. I did the trailer reaction for Avengers Endgame. It is on there. I'm putting more stuff back up on the YouTube channel. And I have opened back up the Supervillain Squad on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Mr. J Washington. Go there. Join the squad. You're getting stuff that's going only to the Patreon. Uh, rate and subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. Rate and leave comments. Leave the comments. I need comments and rates from all of you listeners. What this does is it puts it up higher in the algorithm so more people see this, more people know about it, and you can get it out there to more people, and I can get more people to hear my craziness and wild shit. And when I do a recording late at night talking about comic book TV shows and movies, why? Because a nigga single right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So with that being said, I will holler at you guys next week. Thank you, BC, again. Take care, y'all. I'm out of here. Peace.